What is up, everybody? This is Anthony. Let's see here. I'm not quite positioned right. Hold on a minute, folks. What is up, everybody? Hi. Hi, everybody. What's going on? Okay. Let's go ahead and start this up. Let's try this again. One, two, three. What is up, everybody? This is Anthony with VR365. What is going on? Today is April. Uh, today is April. Today is Thursday. It is April 11th. And the current time is 2.07 p.m. So my question for those of you out there, have you done your taxes? Because you only have a couple of days, Johnny, to get those taxes done. God damn it. And let me tell you, I did most of my taxes yesterday. I still got to do a little bit more taxes today, but I did most of my taxes yesterday. So that is good news. You want to talk about relief like a mofo. When you're done with your taxes and you finish your taxes, you feel so much better because when your taxes are not done, there is a proverbial cloud that is floating over your head and it will not leave your ass alone until you can finally finish those taxes and you can move on with your life. It is incredible, let me tell you. Okay, let me get a sip right here. All righty. Okay, we are ready to begin, folks. Now, I got to give you guys some bad news. And the unfortunate news, Shiz Show. Shiz Show is confirmed. I do not have topics prepared. Despite the fact that you might go ahead and look at this title and you say, is the Acer Compact D, is that the name of it? Is the Acer Compact D OHO the HP Reverb Killer? Do we have a killer in the midst? And we might, we might have a killer, especially because you got a legit IPD, you got a legit IPD adjustment with this thing, okay? The HP Reverb doesn't have that. Let's remember, let's go back to the tested video. That guy got a bit nervous when he started talking about the software IPD. HP's product manager that had worked on the Reverb was noticeably nervous and noticeably a little bit frustrated when they brought up the topic of software IPD and he talked about cheating on each of the FOVs per eye, but you're not going to notice it supposedly. Yeah, right. I think we're going to notice that. And now we find out about this Acer OHO. And so it's very exciting. So we're definitely going to get into that. But before we get into that, we've got some other news to cover. And, you know, every once in a while, I have to get up on here and I have to give you guys some bad news. I have to give you guys some seriously bad news. And you know what? This is one of those occasions we just lost one. Yeah, we just lost one. Rice gum, rice gum. We just lost one. Now, what am I talking about, folks? Rice gum, rice gum, we just lost one. Well, let's go ahead and go to our webinar browser. Let's do it. And here it is. This is the story. Seeking Dawn, the PlayStation, the PlayStation VR port has been canceled because the graphics just are not there. They had to let it go. Multiverse Entertainment, it is unfortunate. But you know what? Honestly... Sometimes this is the right decision. Sometimes this is absolutely the right decision. Pour one out for Seeking, Seeking Dawn's PlayStation VR port today, folks, because after a year of uncertainty and multiple announcements of how they're working on it, ultimately it has been shelved. And so here is the officially posted public statement by Multiverse Entertainment. After six months of hard work, sleepless nights, and tons of frustration, we are officially canceling the Seeking Dawn PlayStation VR project. I know it's a bummer. Trust me, we are even more frustrated than you guys are. I could imagine. Of course they would be. We don't want to accept the obvious and try our best to deliver on the promise. I have just one request. Please be understanding, guys. We are an indie company, a startup with somewhat limited resources, and believe me, if we didn't care about our community, we'd have, we'd have dropped the project much earlier. Honestly, we just didn't want to disappoint. Seeking Dawn PSVR was a beautiful and ambitious dream, 
but unfortunately one that will not come true at least for the time being. So, I mean, they spent months and months on this thing. They worked hard on it, just never could ultimately get this baby running. And it's not a surprise to me. I mean, it's not a huge surprise to me because this is a game, you could have a 1080 Ti, you might even have a 2080 Ti, and Seeking Dawn does not, you know, it doesn't play nicely with your graphics card. It doesn't play nicely with your computer. This is not the poster child for a game that never enters reprojection. Seeking Dawn is a bit of a beast when it comes to getting it to run correctly. In fact, it damn near killed my headset, or what did it do? I ha Oh, it damn near killed my computer. Yeah, I had, I had computer problems with Seeking Dawn. I had some major problems with Seeking Dawn, and... You know, the bottom line here is porting this over to PlayStation VR, not going to happen. So this is one of those scenarios. When I saw this, I was like, damn, we just lost one. Rice gum, rice gum. We just lost one. And I know that some of you are probably saying, wait a minute, what the hell is rice gum, rice gum? We just lost one. And so, you know what? I grabbed a quick little video clip to show you guys what I'm talking about. So here's the thing. There's a YouTuber called Rice Gum, right? And my kids were into this rice gum YouTuber guy um, a number of years back. Not, not recently, but a number of years ago, my kids would watch every one of these rice gum videos. And I just happened to see this music video where these other YouTubers were dissing rice gum in a rap. And I thought it was just absolutely freaking hilarious. And, um, and then I had the chorus just stuck in my head. Rice gum, rice gum, you just lost one. And I was like, oh man, that is so funny. I mean, I don't really know about these YouTuber guys, but it was really funny. But I have a little clip of it. I'm gonna show you guys real quick. So I'm gonna pump up the volume. There's no volume actually on this little AR demo of Project North Star. But I'm gonna show you a quick little clip of a rap, the rice gum diss. This is from a number of years ago. So you'll, you guys will know what is stuck in my head and why I always say we just lost one. So let's go ahead and check this out. Your YouTube's cancer, worse than ISIS. But you have the death, that's a midlife crisis. Rice gum, rice gum, you think you're the champion. You might win some, but you just lost one. Rice gum, rice gum, you think you're the champion. You might win some, but you just lost one. Okay, yeah, that's the thing that was Your stuck YouTube. in my head. It was stuck in my head like you wouldn't believe. And so anytime we lose something, anytime we lose like a big game, a big headset, a product that we were hoping for, we can always say this, rice gum, rice gum, you just lost one. And we did, we lost one, we lost Seeking Dawn. It is a terrible tragedy for all PlayStation VR players around the world. But you know what? Sometimes you lose one and then sometimes you find one. And so let's go to our next story, another webinar browser thing. And here we go. Scion, Scion's Firmament has now added PlayStation VR support as a stretch goal as the Kickstarter has now passed 50%. Yeah, we just lost one rice gum, rice gum. <laughs> and so, but here's the thing. If this Kickstarter passes as a stretch goal, now it's got to meet this stretch goal, but Firmament might be coming to PlayStation VR. So you lose one, you gain one. So it's all gizzies and the hitties. Also, yesterday, Paper Beast is coming to PlayStation VR. So, you know, new games are coming. We did lose Seeking Dawn. It's unfortunate, but hey, we're all going to move on and we will all live our lives. Okay, what is the next story we want to go to? Well, why don't we just go ahead and get into the Acer thing since we were talking about it. And this is it. So, you know, one of the things I wanted to say before we get into this Acer news, I wanted to back it up a little bit. Do you guys remember back at the January Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, there was a story. I, I was talking about these 21, uh, 2160 by 2160 headsets. And I, I was talking about how this is the next craze. This is what we're looking at, folks. New headsets are 21... <laughs> what the hell is giddy in the hizzy? No, it's, it's all gizzy in the hizzies. 
which means it's all good in the hood, basically. But instead of saying it's all good in the hood, you say it's all gizzy in the hizzy, brizzy. So anyway, but what I'm talking about here, folks, is back at the January Consumer Electronics Show, we found out about a reference design that Qualcomm was showing off. And I believe it was Road to VR that was reporting on it. And they were saying, this is the Acer OHO prototype. And so I kept talking about how there's an Acer OHO that is 2160 by 2160. And the hardcore fans of this show might remember that one episode where we went to the Windows Mixed Reality head, uh, subreddit and some guy was like, I just bought an Acer OHO 500. I'm in Malaysia. I've got the first Acer OHO 500. And like one of the number one questions I wanted to ask this guy was what's the resolution? And other people were asking him that. And the resolution was like the same resolution that the original Windows Mixed Reality headsets were. And I was like, what? What happened to the Acer OHO 500 that had the 2160 by 2160 resolution? And so a lot of people probably back at that time thought Anthony must have got his wires crossed. Anthony doesn't know what he's talking about. Or does he? Or does he know what he's talking about? Because you know what we found out about today, folks? We found out about this new Windows Mixed Reality headset. It is the Acer. I actually have to look at the. <laughs> let me look at the story here because what do they call this thing? Okay, let's see what they're calling it. So let's see. During the company's annual Next at Acer conference, Acer announced a new Microsoft-based headset with 2K per eye, 4K overall resolution, and most importantly, physical lens separation adjustment. It is called the Concept D OHO. The Concept D OHO. I mean, it just rolls right off of your tongue. What an incredible name. You've got names like the HP Reverb. That name sucks. But the Acer Concept D OHO? I mean, that name just rolls right off of your tongue. This is a dream come true. So this could be the dream that we've always been dreaming about. Uh, not exactly. Not exactly. I don't know. So that was the title of our thread here is, is the Acer Concept D OHO, is this the killer deal? And you can see right on the side, it says 4K. And if it says 4K on the side, you got to take it to the bank. It is 4K all the way. But see, here's the thing. I mean, one of the concerns that we have about HP Reverb, one of the biggest concerns we have is the fixed IPD. And I talked about it at the very top of this episode. We talked about it when we went over that projections episode where they were throwing those questions at John at Hewlett Packard, the project manager. We don't know what his last name was, but they were talking to this guy. He was at answering a lot of their questions. And when Norman Chan got to the subject of the software IPD, you could see the guy kind of get a little bit nervous and change up his style a little bit right around there. And I believe there could be some issues here with that Acer, uh, with the uh, HP Reverb, because what they did was he talked about how they cheated. They cheated with the FOV per eye, and they said, you know what, we can get away with it because when you combine it, it's all gizzies in the hizzies. That, that was an exact quote. When you combine it, it's all gizzy in the hizzy, so you don't have to worry about nothing, right? You get something for free. You cheat a little bit and you get it for free and there's no downside whatsoever. Or is there? Or is there? Because, of course, um, Jeremy Williams of Tested, the, the whole thing was they were going to have this huge sweet spot, right? This gigantic sweet spot. So the lack of an IPD adjustment, no big deal. No big deal at all. They got a ginormous sweet spot. So if your IPD is 72... If your IPD is 58, it doesn't matter. You're all good because the sweet spot is so freaking huge that no matter what end of that scale you're on, you're probably going to fit in there okay. And then the software IPD adjustment is going to come in and it's going to correct 
the scale and the distance and all of those other things. So it's fine. HP Reverb is all good, right? And you know what? Look, before this headset got announced, before we officially found out about this headset, I was very excited for the HP Reverb, despite despite the lack of a legitimate IPD adjustment. Why? Because resolution kills. I talked about this before. In the NFL, in a lot of sports, speed kills. Speed over everything, right? And when it comes to these headsets, resolution over everything. Maybe, maybe not, but I'll tell you what, 2160 by 2160 per eye, that's pretty freaking incredible. That is kind of next level type resolution there. That is a true second generation of VR headsets, but now enter the Concept D Oho by Acer. And you know what? When you want to talk about quality products that are not flimsy, that don't flap all over the place and don't break in about a week, you want to talk about Acer, right? Oh, maybe not. Okay. Yeah. Acer, not the most high quality headset out of all the Windows Mixed Reality headsets. We're kind of looking at this thing. We're wondering about the strap. It does have the integrated audio solution built into it as well. Remember, all of these are kind of based off of this reference design. And then the other thing about this headset, this headset, see, one of the downsides, probably the single biggest downside here, is that Acer, okay, here's a quote from this upload article. Acer have not announced a price yet, but the product is targeted at creators. Creators. What does that mean, creators? So the Reverb is priced at 599 bucks. And what we heard about when it came to the reverb, we heard about commercial, we heard about enterprise, we heard about architecture, we heard about CAD programs, we heard about um, doctors and training and OSHA training and stuff like that. So the reverb is more designed for commercial, it's more designed for enterprise, but they were going to make it available to every. Like if you want to throw $600 at them, they'll take your $600. And that's what we got with the HP Reverb. It is supposed to be coming out later this month. I don't believe we have any kind of a release date or pre-orders or anything, so we're still kind of wondering about that. And then we don't have any additional details on Concept D Oho, at least not that I've been able to find so far. Um, so there's a lot of unanswered questions. Now, what we do know is it's probably going to be very, very similar to the HP Reverb in a lot of in a lot of ways from the standpoint of the Windows Mixed Reality tracking is the first version of Windows Mixed Reality, and then also the crappy controllers. So unfortunately, crappy controllers. Unfortunately, first gen inside out tracking. Those are the big downsides. Now on the upsides, you do got the integrated headphones. You got the, the true 4K basically headset, 2K each eye, uh, legit 2K each eye. You've got these new screens that are in there. You know, these 2.89 inch screens, these square screens that are in there that make it a little bit smaller and the good news is with this one, you're actually moving these screens back and forth. So you do get that legitimate IPD adjustment. We have no idea what the price is. I don't know if there's any other information that's bouncing around out there. But let me go ahead and let's take a look and see what people in chat are talking about. And let's go ahead and open this up and let me see what everybody's talking about. Okay, so going back a little bit, we're going to go back a little bit to some of the more earlier things here. And yeah, I was talking, of course, about, um, what do you call it? What was the game that just, uh, Seeking Dawn, we were talking about that. But let's see here, when we get to the Reverb and the Acer. Uh, Andy Sky says, I'd rather choose Resolution over FOV. Um, Great Tantrum says, still using Windows Mixed Reality tracking. Not the best. Absolutely not. Um, Recycled says, I never even knew what rep reprojection looked like until I tried Fallout VR. Then I learned all about it. Dell Wolfensparger, when does it ship? That's the question. Like, when does the reverb ship? Much less this headset. We don't know when the reverb ships, and we don't know when this headset ships. Now, I will tell you this. 
I'm a little bit concerned here because I'm more excited about this than the reverb, but at least the reverb, they told us that the reverb was going to be coming in April. Now we're in the month of, oh my God, look at this person's hairstyle there. Yeah, that's like looking for somebody's yearbook pictures. Wow. Um, but anyway, what was I saying here? Yeah, we don't we don't know when the reverb is shipping. They said April, but we don't have a date. We don't have any other information. And then when it comes to this Acer, we have even less information. Like, I don't think there's an official trailer for this yet. I could check, but I don't think there's an official trailer. This is like, this just got announced today at this Acer conference. So possibly more details will be incoming. I could go ahead and bounce over to Road to VR. Let's go ahead and refresh this and see if they have any information on it. Um, yeah, I'm not even seeing it on Road to VR. So I guess they haven't commented on this one yet. So we'll go, let's go back here to upload VR. But yeah, I mean, I'm excited from the standpoint of legitimate IPD adjustment and the 2160 by 2160. Now, the thing I'll have to say at this point, now that we got this new Acer announcement, I think the ball is basically in Valve's court. And so we're waiting. Okay, Dell Wolfensparger says, where is Super Chat? You know what? Contact YouTube, man, because I cannot monetize this channel to save my life. And so if you want Super Chat, it's all about PayPal, bro. PayPal or Patreon. You can go to PayPal. There is a link. Info at VRGameRankings.com. That's the email. I switched my email now. I switched it over so we don't have to worry about the email. My new email for PayPal is info at VRGameRankings.com. When you log into PayPal, you'll see my mug on the screen there, and you know you got the right thing. Shantomio, he just donated $5 via PayPal. Rendered Reality, $15 via PayPal. Um... Let's see here. Hussein X donated $10 via PayPal. So yeah, unfortunately, no super chat. Here's the good news, though. The good news about me not being monetized on YouTube is you don't get ads all the time. Think about all the other YouTube shows you watch that have all these damn ads that pop in right when you're enjoying the program and then bam, a big ass ad comes in out of nowhere. What's the beautiful thing about VR 365? There's no ads unless I play a freaking video like rice gum, rice gum, you just lost one. And then it gets uh, somebody claims copyright on that. Andy Milanakis, Andy Milanakis, rice gum, rice gum, you just lost one. So Andy Milanakis is going to claim copyright on this. And you're probably going to get ads on this video, but a lot of times there aren't any ads. And that is kind of a beautiful thing. Um, that's the upshot. That's basically the upshot of not being monetized. The other upshot of not being monetized is somebody was like, I, I think I was playing an Autica song one time, like I was playing a trailer of Autica. Or no, no, it was my Let's Play. I did a Let's Play of Autica, and it was that song Gold Dust, which I really like that Gold Dust song. And um, somebody replied in the comments, Ah, oh, bro, you're not going to get monetized on this video because gold dust, you know, you're not going to get monetized. But I've never been monetized, so I don't have to worry. I don't have to think about whether or not if I play this movie trailer or this song, I'm not going to get monetized. Boo hoo hoo. I don't have to worry about any of that. That's pretty freaking awesome, right? I would like to be monetized. I'm not going to lie. I would love Super Chat to be working, and I'd love to get a couple of brass nickels for doing some of these shows, but oh well, it's all gizzies and the hizzies, as they like to say. Okay, but yeah, that's this Acer OHO uh, comp Concept D OHO. Concept D OHO. Yeah, say that about 27 times. Okay, so let's go back to the front page of Upload VR as the shiz show continues. We just lost one with Seeking Dawn. We might have lost another one with the HP Reverb, now that we got the Reverb Killer in the house by Acer, okay? Um, now, what other stuff is going on? Well, you know, we've known about this already. We knew that a chair in a room, Greenwater, was coming to PlayStation VR, or at least you knew that if you went to VRGameRankings.com and you went to the most wanted section, the top 
40 most wanted PlayStation VR games. We've had a chair in a room, green water, on that ranking for months, for months now. What we don't have, though, is the actual release date, which is April 23rd. We weren't absolutely sure when the game is coming out, but now we have a confirmed date. So a chair in the room, Greenwater, it is coming on April 23rd. This is one of the cooler horror games that we've had on PC VR, but, but one of the problems here, and I'm, I am a bit concerned about this game coming to PlayStation VR, is because I've always heard that like the HTC Vive version of this game, it is full on room scale. Like you're kind of in a padded cell, right? And so like it all takes place in this one room basically. And if you have a big enough room scale space, you're in the entire room. And so that's kind of that cool room scale vibe. If this was coming to the Oculus Quest, they could do that. They could do that really easy and it would work really well. We talked about this quite a bit yesterday about how the Oculus Quest might be kind of room scale reborn. You know, a, a second wind for room scale games. Now a chair in the room, Greenwater, this is coming to PlayStation VR, is... Is it? It's not going to feature room scale. It's very like the only thing. The only thing I've ever seen PlayStation VR do as far as room scale is like if you're doing uh, PlayStation VR worlds and you're in the shark, the shark tank thing, you know, where you're being lowered in the cage, the shark cage. There's enough room scale there where the entire shark cage can be covered in view, and you can walk. You know, you could walk to all the little areas of the shark cage and you could walk around and that's kind of cool, but it's a really small area and we haven't seen any other PSVR experiences that have been able to do that. So, yeah, I mean, um, Chris in chat says they maybe they made the room really tiny. It would have to be a really tiny room, like even smaller than like freaking an Alcatraz gel cell, which those things are tiny. If you've ever been to San Francisco and you went to Alcatraz um, and you see the actual little prison cells that they had there, just freaking cracker boxes. But I still think it would be bigger than the shark cage that was in PlayStation VR Worlds. And you know, speaking of a gel cell, like isn't that the perfect idea for location-based entertainment? Like think of a weird ass horror experience or something that you could have inside a prison cell and it's it's got a small amount of space and you could actually have the prison bars you know physically have them there have the the sink have the cot with your pillow and make an experience where you're in prison and you, you can physically go up to the bars and grab them. The bars are there and everything's tracked one-to-one. -one. It's a great idea for a location-based experience that takes up a very small amount of space. But you'd have to figure out some really cool thing that could happen in like 25 minutes in a little prison cell. But, you know, not a bad idea. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, Chair in the Room VR. I mean, Chair in the Room Green Water. It is coming to PlayStation VR on April 23rd. We're looking forward to it. Um, it's going to cost 25 bucks. It will have a 10% off discount for PS Plus members when that arrives. And let's see, it will fully support both the DualShock 4 and PS Move controllers. Uh, so that will be cool. Okay, so yeah, I've never, you know, I never played this. This one missed me. I've had a number of opportunities to buy it on a discount, and I was planning on buying it on a discount a couple of different times. I ended up ultimately forgetting about it. It went back to its normal price. I've never played a chair in a room green water. So maybe I'll try it for the first time ever on PlayStation VR. That could be a possibility. Okay, so let's go back to Upload VR and see what other stories are popping off. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know, I have heard about... Actually, you know what? This is a great story. Okay, so this has really blown up on the Oculus subreddit, a lot of people are talking about this cross-buy strategy, and they're talking about this very specific article by Ian Hamilton of Upload VR fame, and people are talking about this, like on the Oculus subreddit, there's a lot of people kind of getting their panties in a bunch over this article saying that this guy, Ian Hamilton, has it out for Facebook. He hates Facebook. He hates Oculus. You know, all the, like, like people are kind of going nuts over this thing. And they're saying that basically Upload VR is trying to spin this cross-buy strategy into this nefarious, 
evil plot by Zuckerberg and his minions to trap you in their closed ecosystem. And my my response to that, in fact, why don't we go, let's go to the Oculus subreddit. Let me see if I can find where they're talking about this because it did kind of blow up a bit. Uh, let's see. Um, see oh my god this is huge news racket nx is coming to the quest that is awesome news absolutely awesome news but let's see here um editorial see look there's 97 comments this was pretty hot a few hours ago back when i was at work i saw a lot of people talking about this and a lot of people getting their panties in a bunch like a mofo like this guy right here larry underscore mud he says jeebus what an idiotic position. Crossby is definitely... I should read it in my Valley Girl voice, right? Jeebus, what an idiotic position, man. Crossby is definitely good for consumers, good for developers, and good for the platform, brah. It instantly expands the market for developers, making it viable. Okay, no, we don't want to do that. Okay, making it viable to invest more in development costs without the expectation of taking a bath but I like taking a bath. So the broad mobile base can effectively subsidize better PC VR. Um, and he says, oh no, please don't lock me into your services by providing something of significant value. I freaking hate the way Microsoft lets me play titles I've accumulated over the last couple of decades on their new hardware. Oh please, Oculus, don't go down that same dark path of forcing me to use your services by providing more value than your competitors. It's too, too cruel. Oh, that is classic Larry Mudd. What a classic comment there. But you know what? I think people are blowing this out of proportion. Okay, wait, let's go back to this editorial here. It says, Facebook is on the path to platform lock in with Oculus Quest. Yes, Facebook, the most nefarious company in the world, they are trying to lock you into their walled garden. I don't, you know, I think we're blowing all of this out of proportion. Look, the bottom line here, Upload VR, they provide me with a lot of great content that I can use on this show. I like Upload VR from that standpoint because you know when when it's a shit show, they've got my show laid out for me. All I got to do is click on a few articles and here's your show. And that's how we're doing it, right? But in this situation, look, what they're doing here is they've got to come up with interesting articles. This is an editorial piece and they're postulating that you know, this is kind of like a little sneaky ploy to get people locked in to the entire Oculus ecosystem, basically. And you know what? I don't think it's like a nefarious scam or scheme, but I will say this. Like, I've talked about this before. You guys have heard me say it before, that this is... This is like psychological warfare. This is subconscious, unconscious warfare is what is going on here. Because what's going to happen is people are going to start to debate internally in the back recesses of their cerebral cortex. They're going to start to debate, wait a minute, do I buy JetX on Steam? because it's available today on Steam, or do I buy it on the Oculus Store? Because if I buy it on the Oculus Store, and then if JetX comes out on the Oculus Quest, I've got a coin flip's chance of getting it for free on the Oculus Quest, or maybe even a better chance of getting it for free on the Oculus Quest. Now, a lot of people would say, well, why the hell would you want it? Why would you even care, man? You're playing it on a PC. You're getting the high-end experience. Why would you want it on your Oculus Quest anyway? Well, I don't know. Others? Others, like other people in your house, like your wife, your girlfriend, your kids, your nephews, you know, aunts and uncles, like having that game on your Oculus Quest is kind of a nice bonus because even if you've played the game to your heart's content in your PC VR man cave, you know, you still have it on the Quest and that's kind of a bonus. And this is something that isn't really hitting people right now, but it's going to start to hit people that buy an Oculus Quest, they start getting this cross-buy thing, they start getting used to this cross-buy thing, and then it really is going to be one of these things where they're going to be on a Steam page. For example, like this Steam page right here, they're going to be looking at JetX, and they're going to be saying, damn, 
buy jet x i want to buy this right now you know normal price is 15 bucks it's 34 percent off it's 9.89 do i buy this thing right now on steam but damn maybe i should buy it on the oculus store because if i buy it on the oculus store maybe i get this free on the oculus quest and then booyah facebook got you locked in locked and loaded baby you're locked in disneyland you gotta buy the five dollar soda you know what I mean? You got to buy the the fifteen dollar personal pizza. Like when you're in Disneyland, it's a closed ecosystem. You ain't bringing in no outside food into Disneyland. That's how they get you. And so, yeah, I mean, one of the questions we have to ask though is, can we get JetX on the Oculus Store? And I have no idea if it's available on the Oculus Store. Like this isn't like a huge, major, major game here, so it might not be on Oculus Store right away. But let's go ahead and transition slightly into JetX. Yeah, it is available. The price is 15 bucks. You can see we do have a 30% discount, so you can grab it for about 10 bones. I have not played this yet. I will hopefully be playing it in the very near future. But we do have some news and notes right here. Um, it says, attention players, the server will be unavailable for 15 minutes. God damn it, 15 minutes? Okay, during the next hour, some players can face with small connection problems. Okay, so that was just some little thing that was earlier today. So that's probably over with, I'd imagine. But yeah, JetX is available. Let's take a look. Let's go to the great Google that owns everything. And they will tell us experiences, experiences, Oculus. And let's see, can we get JetX on Oculus? Is this a debate? Should we have this debate in our heads? Um, Jet X. No, no. See, Jet Island is there. Oh, wait, I need a capital X, maybe. Jet X? No, we're not seeing Jet X. So, not a debate for this one, but it could be a debate in future scenarios and future situations. Yeah, but that is Jet X. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that Oculus is trying to pull one over on you? Do you think that Oculus is just providing you extra value? Like they're not putting a gun to your head. They're just giving you an extra option. Do you think this is a sneaky little trick that they're pulling on you? Do you think that Upload VR is like biased against Oculus? Do you think Ian Hamilton has it out for Oculus? What are your thoughts here? There's a lot of different ways that we can spin this. And I don't know if it's that big of a deal, personally. Let's see what some people might be saying here. Um, and Great Tantrum says, it probably goes down to price. Uh, Kevin says, I just buy on the cheaper platform. Okay, but what if the prices are the same? Uh, Kevin says, I find Steam has the better discounts. Well, I will tell you this. You know, I mean, like JetX right now, is got this 34% discount. Would would the uh, Oculus version have that if it was an Oculus? Maybe not. I don't know. So yeah, there might be some slight differences with, with the pricing there. Uh, Shiny Robot says, same, Chris. If you could stream your PC onto it when at home, then it would be great. Um, Seabass Theory says extra value. You know, this is just extra value. This is not a bad thing. Great Tantrum says Valve took all the steam out of Oculus. LOL. Okay, see what you did there. Uh, Kevin says, I don't see the problem with cross buy. Uh, Dell Wolfensparger says, People are complaining about free software. Dude, people, this is the intro nets. People complain about everything. Um, and then the original catastrophe was supposed to happen with Gear VR, but it never happened. Ryan Hawley, one of our supporters, checking in. I think most people hate hardware-specific software, but it is what it is. Um, and Shiny Robot says, I'm sure it'll be a thing. Pseudo Soul says, not that they have it out for Oculus. They don't like the road that Oculus is on. Well, you know, there's a lot of people that hate Facebook. You know, there's like a major anti-Facebook. Like, I don't... See, I just don't get into a lot of this political stuff. And maybe that's on me. Like, maybe I should be embarrassed to not be up on these political things. Maybe I should care about, like, what's going on in our country and, like, privacy and stuff like that. But honestly, it goes in... <laughs> well, first of all, I don't watch regular TV. Like, I don't watch the freaking nightly news with Tom Brokaw. So I don't even see this stuff. But then when I do see it, it goes in one ear and it goes right out the other. I don't pay much attention to all the political mumbo-jumbo. Like, people were telling me when I signed up to Patreon... 
people were like, you don't know about Patreon? They are literally the devil, man. Like, Patreon is the worst company ever. I can't believe you're doing a Patreon. And I'm like, I didn't know they were that bad. Okay, well, I'm just trying to finally monetize a little bit here. And now you're telling me they're the goddamn devil. And I just signed a deal with the devil. Oh, well, it happens. But yeah, that's one of the stories that we're looking at here. But let's go ahead and go back to Upload VR. And I'm going to go back to their main page and let's see what were the other big news. So, you know, I don't know anything about this. I'm like looking at this for the first time. But apparently Sony has filed a patent for NVR eSports tournament spectator system. Interesting. Own a PSVR? One day you might be able to spectate eSports. Yeah, that's what I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to put on my VR headset so I can see somebody in a MOBA, bruh. And I can see, oh my god, he's switching to the wrong lane, bro. And I got my spectator vision and I'm watching Apex Legends, bruh. Nah, I, I, I mean, dude, I barely want to watch sports, real sports, much less fake sports. But there's people that are into it. There's people that like this. So I guess don't knock it until you try it. But I will knock this lady's hairstyle. I definitely will do that. Valve added a spectator mode to the Dota 2 International Championships. So it's happened before. This is not the newest thing in the world. Facebook streams live events in VR with Oculus ven venues. And that includes a crowd. But that's been focused on physical sports. So, you know, it's a good idea. I mean, people are going to try to patent anything and everything because we are, this whole AR, VR thing is the Wild West. And so as people start screwing around with this stuff more and more, different ideas are going to pop into people's heads and they're going to think, oh my God, I never thought about this. We could do spectators while you're in VR. You could have any freaking camera angle. You can get down physically into the MOBA lanes and watch everything unfurl right there. You could be spectating in these championship events. How freaking awesome would that be? And then somebody was like, yeah, we better freaking file a patent on that stuff. And that's exactly what they did. So Sony filed a patent. It is titled Spectator View into an Interactive Gaming World Showcased in a Live Event Held in a Real World Venue. God damn, that is a mouthful. Let me read that again one more time. This is the entire title of their patent. Spectator View into an Interactive Gaming World Showcased in a Live Event Held in a Real World Venue. Damn, that is a really deep patent application there for a very specific kind of a thing. But when you do a patent application, you know, I mean, hey, you got to be as specific as possible. So that's kind of what they're doing there. Uh, Wild West. Yeah, I did say Wild West. What did somebody have to say about Wild West? Oh, Pseudo Soul says, Wild West? Are you hinting at Red Dead 2 in VR? Know what I'm saying? I wish. I wish I was hinting about that. And actually, if you go back pseudo soul, you might remember that very first episode when I was talking about Wind Waker, uh, not Wind Waker, but Breath of the Wild in VR. I was saying, what's going to happen next? Bioshock VR? Red Dead Redemption 2 VR? GTA 5 VR? Like, what kind of bizarro world are we in? It seems like we've now moved from that bizarro world kind of back into a normal reality. Because we haven't really heard anything completely off our rockers recently. Um, so it seems like we're kind of back in a normal world here. But the Wild West, yes, VR and AR this is the Wild West. People are thinking of novel concepts, unique concepts every single day. And if you don't patent that shit right away, somebody else is going to patent it. So you got to do it. You got to patent it. You got to make it happen. Okay. So let's see. Where am I right now? Okay. So we're on our webinar browser and I'm looking at stories here. I just wanted to see, you know, this is something we could talk about. Vader Immortal. Now, of course, tomorrow... You know, tomorrow is Vader Immortal Day, right? We're going to have the Star Wars experience thing tomorrow. We're probably going to get the first legitimate trailer, like a full-on legitimate trailer for Vader Immortal that shows a lot more than we've ever seen before. We're going to finally like figure out what this game is all about. But one of the things that has kind of leaked out about this game is that if you've, uh, if you've experienced Secrets of the Empire you kind of have an idea of where they're going with Vader Immortal. And so if you don't want any spoilers whatsoever 
on Vader Immortal, you might want to close your eardrums right about now. Let me just, I, mean, I just want to see, I don't want to spoil it either, because I'll tell you what, of all the Oculus Quest games that are going to be coming our way, I am probably more hyped for Vader Immortal than any other Oculus Quest game, just because it is, it's native, you know, it's native to the Oculus Quest. This, there's no Vader Immortal coming to the Rift as far as we know. This was built 100% with the Oculus Quest in mind. And so I'm excited. I'm a Star Wars guy in the first place. I like Darth Vader. I don't like the new Star Wars movies. I think they kind of like jacked them up a little bit. Um, but you know, I'm a Star Wars fan from back in the days and I'm a, I'm a Darth Vader fan. So I am interested in Vader Immortal, but let's see what they say here. Star Wars Secrets of the Empire, the excellent location-based VR experience from the void apparently sets up the upcoming VR series. That is according to Vicky Dobbs Beck, executive in charge at ILM X Lab, who recently spoke at GTC 2019. Uh, Beck described the link between Secrets of the Empire and Vader Immortal as a foray, a foray into connected stories. So Star Wars Secrets of the Empire essentially sets up Vader Immortal, whereas in Secrets of the Empire, you are in an outpost on Mustafar and you could see Vader's monolith in the distance. Now you'll have the opportunity to go into the monolith and engage with Vader on his home turf, not to mention the opportunity to wield a lightsaber, the dream that everybody has always been dreaming. So I've never played. I haven't been to the void. I haven't tried Secrets of the Empire. I believe Chris did try Secrets of the Empire. I mean, there's people that have tried this. In fact, I think it was um, Kishore Hari of Tested's uh, This Is Just a Test podcast, one of my favorite podcasts out there, by the way, even though I wish it was much more VR heavy than it is. Um, he recently went to like Orlando and was talking about going to like the Harry Potter thing at Universal Studios and all that stuff. But he also went to the void and he tried this, Secrets of the Empire. A lot of people have talked about it. It's pretty good. It's pretty interesting. But apparently, like if you experience that, you might have a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be looking at with Vader Immortal. Um, let's see here. So one of the things I say, of course, at the end here, we'll likely have our answers tomorrow. Vader Immortal is set to be revealed in a full in full at a panel at Star Wars Celebration in Chicago tomorrow. So yeah, I think um, we'll probably, I would imagine we're going to get a legitimate trailer tomorrow about Vader Immortal and we'll get a little bit of the story. We'll see some of the gameplay. We might see some of the lightsaber gameplay that's involved in the game and what else is possibly involved in the game as well. And then if it's going to be at a panel, we might find out you know, how many hours the experience lasts. One of my biggest worries, I'd say easily my single biggest worry about Vader Immortal is that it's going to be like two hours, you know, two and a half hours of an experience, which that would kind of be a little bit lame. But I mean, you know, it'll depend on the price and everything. Okay, um, let's see. So that's most of what's going on here in terms of news stories. And one other thing that we could do really quick is we could go ahead and check out some of the subreddits. It's possible that there could be a lot of hype on some of these subreddits now that we have this Acer announcement. I mean, can you guys believe this? We had, prior to, the, prior to today, we had four big VR headsets that were going to come our way in the next 90 days. We've got, of course, the Oculus Rift S. Like, that should be out any any minute now right we've got the oculus quest we've got hp reverb we've got valve index and now we've got the acer uh compact d oho 500 but we don't know i mean that's not necessarily coming in the next 90 days and probably it's probably unlikely to be coming in the next 90 days but now we've got five headsets five headsets that are and that and we're not even talking about the vive cosmos that's six six headsets that are floating out there that are all potential you know they all have the potential to potentially be your next headset they have the potential to potentially be your next headset oh you know what this is major news facebook confirmed that they're not going to compete in mid high-end vr in the foreseeable future so i heard about this this was i believe jason rubin is like in germany or something Okay, so yeah, so this has been translated. 
and it says Oculus, no high-end VR headset planned for enthusiasts. So, you know, and, and here it is, high-end does not fit the corporate philosophy. Asked whether Oculus or Facebook are considering a higher-priced alternative to the Oculus Rift S, which also satisfies enthusiasts. Jason Rubin answers that this does not fit in with the company's fundamental concern. This, ref this refers to Facebook's motto, connecting people. Jason expects that a Rift-style headset with better technical specifications priced at over 400, is that euros? 449 euros would find virtually no buyers for the Oculus Rift S. Many people could not connect such a product and it is therefore not pursued. Now, you know what? Jason Rubin talked about this in that one interview, in the interview with Ben Lang. He talked about it because Ben Lang was asking him, Ben Lang was saying, you know what? Why don't why don't you uh, come out with like the Rift S Plus or the Rift, uh, you know, the Rift S Pro? You know, why? Like, like you could have this mass market Rift S headset that is really going to be targeted at everybody, but why not make a higher end version for like the hardest of the hardcore? And the thing that Jason Rubin talked about in this regard, he said, look, you need an entire team, you know, to be able to build this Rift S Pro, you need an entire team of engineers, you need an entire team of testers, you need to have like the manufacturing capacity for there's so many things that go along with that and he's saying that they're basically a relatively small company still inside Facebook that Oculus you know they're they're not this gigantic behemoth of a company within within Facebook and they don't have the member they don't have enough people to do that that's why they actually reached out to Lenovo in the first damn place to make the Oculus Rift S because their focus is on the Quest. Their focus is on the Quest. So all their internal engineers were very focused on the Quest and they looked outside of themselves to find Lenovo to help them out with the Rift S because they didn't have all the engineers, they didn't have the manufacturing capacity, they didn't have the, uh, the people that could test it and all of that. And their focus is mass market. Now this sucks. This really does suck for a very specific niche of individual. And the individuals that it sucks for are the hardest of the hardcore Oculus fanboys that have the money to burn. They want a really high-end headset, but they also have a deep love for Oculus. They have a deep love for Palmer Lucky, Brendan Areeb, Nate Mitchell. They have a deep love for like the original Kickstarter. They have a deep love for the original vision of Oculus. These were the people that were crushed when they got bought by Facebook. It was like the worst possible scenario that could ever happen. They were absolutely devastated by it, but they eventually got over it. They eventually got over it. And they bought an original Oculus Rift, even though it didn't have any goddamn motion controls with it. And they stuck with... Dude, I remember these Oculus people. I remember them because I had a vibe at the time. See, everybody thinks I'm a freaking Oculus fanboy. What you guys don't realize, I was in the Vive camp for like a number of years. And I remember the Oculus fanboys that would come up with incredibly ridiculous arguments about why they didn't need track controllers because they're going to have better track controllers. And they did. They did end up with better track controllers. So I will give it to them. But the most fervent of the Oculus fan base way back at that time, they would create elaborate explanations for why they didn't have tracked controllers and why it was the right idea that they didn't have tracked controllers and why the HTC Vive was a bad idea. There's people out there, man. Their tribalism is real. You would think that once you hit the age of like 22, 23, 24, that come on, grow up, bro. Like... Unless you work for this company or unless you have like crazy amounts of stock in this company, why do you care, man? I've always wondered this. See, I've never 
I've never really been a fanboy of anything. Like, like I've had friends that were hardcore X boy, um, X boy. They were hardcore Xbox fanboys. I have this one friend to this day right now. I'm not gonna say his name, but he is an Xbox fanboy through and through, man. And like, I was talking to him about PlayStation Four, and I was like, dude, PlayStation Four is just a better machine. But but it just it it's like you're talking to a zombie. They they just they won't listen to it. You know, it's like people get behind these brands. Like some people they buy a Toyota. They will only ever buy a Toyota. They will never consider anything but a Toyota. There's people like that, man. And it's like, why? You're an adult now. Now I remember back when we were kids and when we were in school, you'd get into these hardcore arguments. And the reason it happened back in the days. It happened back in the days because you couldn't afford everything. So you were a Sega Genesis kid or you were a Super Nintendo kid. And if you were a Sega Genesis kid, you hated the Super Nintendo kids. If you were a Super Nintendo kid, you hated the Genesis kids. And you would argue back and forth. And then you'd have the rich kid that freaking had a Neo Geo and he had an Atari Jaguar and he had a freaking Panasonic 3DO and he had a Genesis and he had a Super Nintendo and he didn't give a damn. And that's kind of what I, but see, I thought like when everybody grew up and they got enough money and stuff where you weren't forced into a camp, like why, why the tribal mentality, brah? That's like, I could care less. Like my headset could say Black and Decker on the side of it. Like it could be a Black and Decker headset. It could be made by Keurig, okay? I could get a headset tomorrow that was made by Keurig and not only will it let me play my VR games, but it'll brew me a hell of a cup of coffee right when I'm in VR. I don't care. I don't care what's written on the side of the headset. Now, having said all of that, I get I get invested in these companies to some degree as well and I start to root for them in to some degree as well like people might say hey you're a magic leap you were a magic leap fanboy what are you talking about you were a magic leap guy like you were rooting for magic leap and talking about magic leap and all that stuff yeah I, I will I'll start rooting for them but what I'm telling you is as soon as another option comes out that's better, I will drop them like a freaking bad habit. Like I have no loyalty to any of these companies. I will jump from platform to platform in a New York minute. Like I was all up on the HP reverb and now I'm saying reverb killer, bro. This Acer Oho is the reverb killer. Don't worry about it. So, so you know, I mean, Valve Index, like everybody's hyped on Valve Index. Well, if tomorrow Google announced the freaking titanium VR headset that freaking puts the Valve Index to shame, I'm buying that shit. I don't give a damn, you know? And I think other people should kind of try to be like that. But, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, Del, Del Wolfensparger says, Did you know Black & Decker is making an HMD? They should. Black & Decker used to have some pretty nice products back in the days. Um, but, yeah, that's funny. Okay, so anyway, how? Do, yeah, so, you know, so people are going to be very upset at this. Yeah, Oculus is, they're not in this game. The thing that's weird, though, like what I find weird about this, the one thing I will say that that is actually legitimately weird about this is whatever happened to the freaking half dome and verifocal and all that shit? Like, were they on two divergent paths, right? And they were legitimately thinking about really pushing high end VR. And so they made this freaking verifocal lenses and they made this half dome and, and it was like a research project. And like Michael Abrash was happy as hell, and John Carmack was happy as hell, and Brendan Areeb was happy as hell. And then at some point, they all got into a boardroom and they said, you know what? Uh uh, cancel this shit. We're going a completely different route. Race to the bottom, baby. Get Lenovo on the hotline. Race to the bottom. And that seems what's kind of happened recently. And, you know, Facebook, see, here's the downside. Facebook was the best thing to ever happen to VR and also simultaneously the worst thing to ever happen to VR. It was the best thing to ever happen to VR because, oh my God, did they throw just wheelbarrows of money at all kinds of shit and they continue to do so. And imagine where VR would be right now 
if Facebook was throwing no money in this direction. It would be a different kind of a world we'd be living in as far as VR is concerned. But, so, you know, Facebook is one of the best things that ever happened to VR from that standpoint. But it's also one of the absolute worst. And I'll tell you why. Facebook is such a huge behemoth of a company that a tiny little niche does nothing for them. 20, 30, 40,000 people, a couple of hundred thousand people that might buy a high-end headset, it does nothing for them. It doesn't, they're not moved. They're not impressed. They have no interest. Facebook is not, Facebook didn't spend, pay billions of dollars for Oculus to have an addressable market the size of people with triple monitors that are playing freaking project cars. They didn't do that. You know what I mean? And so like, they're not going to make a high-end headset that appeals to a couple hundred thousand people on planet Earth. No, they need a product that they can sell to millions, millions of people, man. That's what they're all about. They want to put a billion people into VR. And that's great. That's great from a certain standpoint. It's also kind of shitty from a certain standpoint because what happens to all that technology that they're working on in Facebook labs? Will any of that ever see the light of day? Now, one of the things that Jason Rubin did talk about as well, though, he did say that at a certain point, they will have a Rift 2. And when they have a Rift 2, the change is going to be so significant that it might break everything that came before that. And it might be starting off in a whole new ball game that your old software, maybe it won't even work. You know, I mean, they might have an emulator or something, but but you know, it's it's like they're starting with this new thing. Maybe they're gonna have gloves and maybe verifocal and all that shit is gonna come back. But none of that is <laughs> pseudo soul says, hey, was the project cards comment directed at me? No, I'm just talking about like your triple monitor gamers. You know how that's such a niche? Like Facebook doesn't give a damn about a niche. Like a niche doesn't move them. A company like Valve, well, not even Valve, but a company like HTC or Pimax, you know, a much smaller company, they can look at a smaller niche like that and say, you know what, these guys can actually, we can sell a couple hundred thousand headsets and this will work. Star VR or whatever. You know, you have different markets. HTC Vive at this point seems like they're focusing on commercial enterprise, location-based entertainment. And so the good news for us as enthusiasts, here's the good news. The good news is what we want in a VR headset is kind of what location-based entertainment centers are going to want as well. Location-based entertainment centers need something that will provide that wow factor, high resolution, advanced shit. To, to get you to go to their location-based center, to get you to pay that money to pony up, they need advanced stuff. Well, that's also what us high-end enthusiasts want. We want some advanced stuff. And that's where you get something like the Star VR headset. And so the good news is we are going to have some companies that are going to do that. The bad news is, is that you hardcore Oculus fanboys, if you're also a hardcore enthusiast that wants the highest end shit, I'm sorry, it's not going to say Oculus on the side of your headset. You're going to have to give that up. Is there anybody in chat? <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm the teacher. Okay, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you admit that you are a hardcore Oculus fanboy. Your blood bleeds blue. You want to stay in the Oculus camp. God damn it. You're buying an Oculus Rift S. You love Oculus through thick and thin. You're always going to be down with Oculus, but you're also a hardcore VR enthusiast. Hold your hand up. If you're that guy, hold your hand up because this guy, whoever this guy is, you're going to have to come to the very, very harsh realization. You're going to have to come to this harsh realization that it's not this ain't your this ain't your company anymore, bro. This ain't your company anymore. You're gonna have to jump over to Valve. You're gonna have to jump over to Pimax. You could still like Oculus. You could still be a major fan of Oculus, and you could still buy an Oculus Rift S. I just got done saying, look, I'm platform agnostic. I don't care about what the names are on the sides of these headsets. I have a PlayStation VR. I love it a lot. 
I had I had a Vive. I don't have one anymore. But I mean, I would buy a Vive Cosmos at the drop of a hat. If it was the right headset at the right price, I'll jump all over the Vive Cosmos. I ain't got no problems. Um, but what I'm trying to say here is I've got a lot of games that are on the Oculus store. I have an investment in the Oculus ecosystem. And I'm always like... I don't know about the word always, but I'm probably going to want to have an Oculus headset in my library for the foreseeable future. But I'm still going to look at these other headsets and be like, yeah, bro, 2160 by 2160. You know, so I'm going to go to the Valve Index. I'm going to I'm going to go to the HP Reverb. I'm going to go to the Acer. Uh, what the hell is it called again? Uh, the Acer, the Acer Compact DOO. They need a new name like it is going out of style. They need a new name so bad. Oh my, they cannot come to retail with a name called Acer Compact DOO. Come on, please give us a new name for that. But like, I'll go after that. I'll go after the HP Reverb. I'll go after the Valve Index. But I'm still going to keep an Oculus headset somewhere around here. Because you know what? There's still Stormland. You know, there's still Stormland, there's still Defector, there's still Dead and Buried 2, Shadow Point, which is going to come to the Rift a little bit later, Journey of the Gods, it's going to come to the Rift a little later. There's still all this shit. You know, look at something like Spheres. Like, if you want to experience Spheres, you got to have an Oculus, right? And sure, you can do Revive. And, you know, yesterday on our show, yesterday I was talking to Erwin X, I was talking to Justin, and we were talking about Revive. Revive, and he was saying that, you know, Revive isn't as bad as I think it is. But you know what? I remember back to the old days of Revive, and it was it it was not their fault. It wasn't like Cross VR's fault. It wasn't a fault of the Revive software. But you got to have the real controllers, man. You just do. You just got to have them. So I think if you're going to have a lot of Oculus software, you're still going to need an Oculus Rift headset. But Forget about Oculus when it comes to a high-end headset. You got to start looking in a different ju- direction now. You know, you got to start looking in a different area and you know, we'll see what happens. But yeah, we've been going for over an hour and I am completely out of uh voice gas basically. I'm running out of steam here. I need water and I need to get the hell out of dodge. So let's go back over here to our standard scene. Rice gum, rice gum. Rice gum, rice gum, you just lost one. Yeah, let's hear this one more time. Worse than ISIS, but you have the death, that's a midlife crisis. Rice gum, rice gum, you think you're the champion. You might win some, but you just lost one. Rice gum, rice gum, you think you're the champion. You might win some, but you just lost one. Okay, but yeah, guys, that's going to go ahead and do it for this particular episode of VR365. Definitely a shiz show. But you know what? Probably slightly fun for some people out there. But yeah, that's going to go ahead and do it. And yeah, there is no super chat, no super hat. But you know what? PayPal, Patreon, or I don't know. There's probably some other way somebody could send money to me. I should have a P.O. box and I'll put it on the screen. You could just mail money in a freaking envelope if you want to do that. Or just buy me a headset. You know what? I do need to do that. I need to get a P.O. box and just say, do you want to send me a VR product? Here's the P.O. box. You know, I should do that. That's actually a good idea. Thanks for thinking of it. But yeah, no, sorry, I don't have a super chat. Um, I thought about Tippy Stream for a minute, but I don't know. It's kind of annoying, all the announcements that come in with Tippy Stream. It's a bit annoying, so I haven't gone that road. But yeah, go ahead and PayPal if you want to. Um, or just, you know, like the video, subscribe, you know, here's what you guys can do. If you don't want to pay any money or donate any money, that's perfectly fine. Like no big deal. It's all good. It's all gizzies in the hizzies. Don't, you don't have to donate anything to be a part of this show. You don't have to be like our boy. Let's see the last, the last person I have, the last Patreon supporter. Yeah. You don't have to be like our boy, Andy L. My, you don't have to be like this guy. You don't have to support the show with a Patreon uh, support or a PayPal donation. You don't have to do that. But you know, one thing you could do is talk to some of your VR buddies and say, have you ever seen VR365? This guy is a nut. He's a straight up nutcase. And this guy does a show every single day. 
He does a show every single day. This guy's out of his mind. He's doing a live stream every single day about VR gaming, VR news, VR discussion. I don't know where this guy finds the time. He's crazy like that. But yeah, tell somebody about this show. That's the other incredible way that you can help out this show. Because in some ways, the best kept secret, you know, the best kept secret in VR gaming, both VR365 and VR game rankings. Some two of the best kept secrets, I think. And VR Roundtable is like the third best kept secret. I'm still amazed there are people that don't know about VR Roundtable. And you know what? I was almost done with the show, but I remembered one thing. I remembered one thing, and I got to cover one thing before I get out of here. So hold on a second, guys. Hold on. I got one more thing to cover. I want to talk to you guys about a new podcast that I started listening to. Now, somebody in chat, I don't remember who it was, but I was asking people for podcast suggestions, and somebody suggested this podcast here. It's called Play PSVR. Now, I don't watch their YouTube versions. I get it on iTunes. I just get the audio version on iTunes. But there's a podcast. It is called Play PSVR, the podcast. They're up to episode 57. This was like three days ago that they had this episode. And that's episode 56. And they also do this thing called Golden Stream. Okay, now there's two guys that do this podcast. I believe it's Andy and Alex. And you know what? I like this podcast, man. I don't know who gave me the recommendation for this podcast, but I like this podcast. I especially like Alex. They're both good. Like both of these guys are good and they're they're funny. See, Andy is this guy that just does not give an F and he'll just say anything and but I like Alex. Alex is Alex is a talented dude. In fact, I reached out to Alex. I um I hit him up on a uh, Reddit. I sent him a private message on Reddit. And I said, I said, "Bro, I want you to come on VR365." This guy Alex, I haven't heard back from him. So if anybody wants to tweet at this podcast Play PSVR, I want to have Alex on this show. N nothing against Andy, it's just Alex has a better microphone and also like his like the voice quality of Alex is better than Andy. I don't know what recording situation he's got going on, but Alex sounds better to me when I'm listening to it than Andy. They're both great. You know, they're both great. But I like Alex, and I'd love to do a show with Alex where we basically talk about the state of PlayStation VR, you know, and I could pick his brain on all kinds of PSVR stuff. Really, really like it. And um, but the thing is, there's a there's somebody that I was reminded of somebody's voice when I heard this podcast. This guy, Alex, I was reminded of somebody. And you know what? I made a little montage of two people that I'm reminded of when I listened to this guy, Alex. And here's the two people. Okay, so this is Rex Hudler. He's a baseball announcer, I believe, for the Kansas City Royals. And then that is uh, Blake Shelton. You guys know Blake Shelton. I mean, he's a, he's a what do you call it? A judge or whatever on The Voice, you know, he's one of the the guys on The Voice, and his girlfriend is Gwen Stefani, right? So Rex Hudler and Blake Shelton, for some reason, when I listen to that guy Alex on the Play PSVR podcast, I'm reminded of the voice of these two people, more Rex Hudler than Blake Shelton, but a little bit of Blake Shelton as well. And I just I don't know why that's what popped into my head. I've never seen a picture of the guy. I don't know what he looks like at all. He's probably I mean way way younger than both of these guys. I would have to imagine like Rex Hudler is he hella old now, and Blake Shelton's up there. Like Blake Shelton's my age pretty much, and um, and that guy Alex reminds me like his voice reminds me of those two guys. It's funny. I just wanted to mention that. But yeah, play PSVR. If you are a PSVR fan, now you got to be willing to deal with like, like these guys are not sanitary, okay? You don't want to listen to this when you're with your little kids and stuff. These guys cuss, they say inappropriate things, but they're funny. I really like this podcast. So whoever gave me the recommendation for this podcast, much love. I really like it. And I'm looking for more recommendations because now that I'm back at work, I've got to listen to podcasts and I run out of them, man. There's just not that many. Like, like if you do a search on iTunes for VR podcast, 
there's a lot of them out there. But you but you click on them and the podcast was done in like 2017 or like 2016 or 2018. They haven't had shows in years, you know, and so there's a lot of VR podcasts that started and then they died off. And so there aren't that many podcasts that are continuing to turn it out. And F Reality, you know, that's my number one. I listened to that on Monday. This is a test, the tested podcast. I listen to that one whenever it's available. Um, I sometimes listen to DLC with Jeff Kanata, even though it's kind of flat gaming, but they'll talk about VR every now and then. I listen to Bobby Blackwolf. He'll talk about VR every once in a while, but it's more of a flat gaming podcast. And I'm hoping to have Bobby Blackwolf on as a guest and interview him about nothing but VR. He's also into music games like Attica and like Dance Central and Beat Saber and stuff like that. So I could talk to him about music games and then also general VR stuff. So I'm hoping to have Bobby Blackwolf on. But I want to get this guy Alex, man. Alex of Play PSVR. I mean, Andy's fine too. Andy's fine too. It's just Andy doesn't remind me of Blake Shelton and freaking Rex Hudler. And that's what I like about that. But anyway, yeah, I just wanted to cover that real quick. I didn't want to forget about that. Okay, so now we can get out of here. Yeah, I wonder if Alex has a girlfriend that looks like Gwen Stefani. I think not. I think not. But who knows? Maybe he does. Okay, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and bounce out of here, folks. That's going to do it for this particular episode of VR365 Live, coming to you all the way live. And I will be back tomorrow on April 12th at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Probably another shiz show. Because, see, the thing is, when I go to work and I come home off of work, I just don't have enough time to get things dialed up. But like Saturday and Sunday, actually, those, well, Saturday should be a better show because I'll actually have time to actually prepare topics and stuff. But I think the shiz shows are halfway decent, so hopefully that's the case and it's not too bad. All right, bros, I got to get the hell out of here. I will see you next time. Have a wonderful Thursday. Take it easy and later.